Hello to all my listeners and viewers, and welcome back to another episode of Geopod. I'm your host Dylan Woods, and today I'd like to provide you with my reaction to the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran a couple days ago. So the assassination itself stands as an incredible success for the state of Israel. They were able to take out one of the most important leaders in the organizational structure of one of its art nemesis, Hamas. And not only were they able to do that, they were able to do that in the very heart of the axis of resistance, in the very heart of its nemesis, Iran. So before I want to delve into the possible consequences, the conclusions, the aftermath of this operation. Let's take a look at the technicalities first. And let's take a look at who Ismail Haniyeh was as a person. So what I understand from the operation is that it was months long. It was planned for months long on time, right? Like they didn't just pull this one out of the head. No, apparently they placed a sleeper bomb inside the residence of Ismail Haniyeh within Tehran, undercover, very dangerous, deeply treacherous mission, and eventually just waited until he was at the right place at the right time, so to speak, and took him out. So not only does this illustrate the extreme cunning of Israel's intelligence uh, services, but also its boldness to venture so deep into enemy territory and pull off something this um, this cunning. So now let's talk about who Ismail Haniyeh was as a person because over the course of the past few days I've read and listened to a lot of different accounts, different perceptions about who he was as a person and I just like to set the record straight. So Ismail Haniyeh became a person of interest approximately around 1993. And by that time, he was already a member of Hamas. He was already a terrorist, just to put it plainly. But by that time, he was appointed dean of the Islamic University within Gaza. And that's a very important position for someone within a terrorist organization. Not only that, but with the agenda that Hamas and its parent organization, the Muslim Brotherhood, adhere to. Because what could Ismail Haniyeh do as dean of the Islamic University? Well, he could disseminate the radical agenda of Hamas, their radical doctrine. He could radicalize, he could indoctrinate. He had the freedom to alter education, to alter narratives. He was in complete and total control of the formation of the next generation of Gazans, especially those who have shown keen intelligence and potential. Four years later, became the first time that he was appointed ahead of a Hamas charter within the Gaza Strip. And less than 10 years later, in the aftermath of the Israeli withdrawal out of Gaza in 2005, he spearheaded the list of the legislative elections within Gaza in 2006. And it was around at this point that his true colors emerged to the surface. For those of us who studied the legislative elections within Gaza in 2006, we understand there are a lot of question marks regarding Hamas's rapid ascension and its, well, surprising victory more or less in the wake of Fatah, who remained the largest party a mere week before the election results. Either way, Hamas won the elections and it was supposed to engage with Fatah in a joint government effort. What did Hamas do with Ismail Haniyeh as its spearhead. It cast its Fatah out, killed dozens and dozens of Gazans, ruined hundreds of more lives, and assumed control of the Gaza Strip for itself. And after that, it heralded in almost two decades of radicalization and indoctrination of Gazan youths. So all the narratives, all the claims by defensive experts and journalists that Ismail Haniyeh is this pragmatist, this moderate voice amidst the bulk of radical voices is simply incorrect based upon this history alone. Yes, 
after 2006, he withdrew from the front lines, if you will, of Hamas leadership and focused more on the political aspects. But he did so for two very important purposes. For one, there wasn't a greater sponsor Hamas adhered to than Ismail Haniyeh and its fortune, which was estimated to be around $6 billion in worth. Now, in many ways, Ismail Haniyeh and its funds were the motor, or were the fuel rather, sorry, that drived the motor that was Hamas, fueling its terrorist activities, making sure that its terrorist plans and activities and schemes could come to fruition. Secondly, and perhaps even more importantly, what Ismail Haniyeh was also responsible of after 2006, leading up to his very death, was to expand the network of Hamas within the Middle East. He went to Turkey, shook hands with Erdogan. He went to Qatar. He went to Iran, to the Ayatollahs, to increase and reinforce his connections and his networks with those parties within the region, to fortify the position of Hamas within the international community, but most of all, to alter the perception of Hamas, not just throughout the region, but throughout the entire international community as a whole. And we only have to look at the current accounts to see that this plan has paid off. So for those of us, or for the, those defense analysts, journalists, who say that the death of Ismail Haniyeh serves no strategic purpose, other than a symbolic one, are simply wrong. What Israel has done is cut off the fuel to the motor that is Hamas. What it has done is take out the one responsible for reinforcing its terrorist network throughout the region. The one who kept funding its terrorist activities, including this October 7 terrorist attacks. So what Israel has done is take out the mastermind, one of the masterminds of a master's organizational structure. And it will be very hard for the organization to replace him. Yes, Ismail Haniyeh profiled himself as this political figure, this voice of moderation who wished to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict for diplomatic means. Alas, his actions have proven contradictive in that regard and thereby show his true colors. Ismail Haniyeh was not a politician. Ismail Haniyeh was not a freedom fighter. Ismail Haniyeh was a terrorist. One responsible for the death of hundreds, thousands of lives, not just on Israel's side, but on the Palestinian side as well. Starting with his efforts to indoctrinate, radicalize and manipulate, and eventually to fund and orchestrate terrorist activities. This is my thought. These are my thoughts on the subject. If you wish to comment, please feel free to do so in the comment section below. If you wish to engage in some sort of discussion with me, please feel free to do so as well. You can reach out to me in the comment sections or you can reach out to me directly and send me a DM. In the next video on this channel, I will delve into the possible fallout from the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh across the entire region. And talk a little bit in depth about the possibilities or scenarios which may occur. I thank you very much for listening to this clip. Please leave a like below. Please subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you all again. Thank you.